Hi Creekside Kids! Happy Mother's Day! As you might have guessed, these flowers were a gift to me for Mother's Day and so was this lovely hammock that I am sitting right next to and I can't wait to just jump into it when church is over and relax and enjoy an afternoon with my family. I wish I could hear what you guys are doing with your moms today. I hope it is extra special and I can't help but be thinking about gifts and what a wonderful gift giver God is. Have you ever gotten a gift that you were not sure was a good gift? You know, um, maybe someone gave you a BB gun and you were like, oh no, is this a good gift? I hope I don't hurt anything with it. Maybe that's just the mom and me talking. <laughs> but I know for sure that there have been times that I have asked God for things and then afterwards thought, I don't know, is that what I really want? Is that what I really need? What if he gives me what I asked for and it's actually not a good idea? And I love that Jesus taught his friends that we do not have to worry about that. We can trust that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of the heavenly lights and we don't have to worry about him giving us bad gifts. In fact, Jesus explained it this way. I want to read it out of the real Bible. He says this, it's from chapter 11 in Luke, right after Jesus has taught his friends how to pray, he also gives them this encouragement. So I tell you to ask and you will receive. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. Everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who searches will find and the door will be opened for everyone who knocks. Which of your fathers would give your hungry child a snake if the child asked for a fish? Which one of you would give your child a scorpion if the child asked for an egg? As bad as you are, you still know how to give good gifts to your children. But your heavenly father is even more ready to give the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks. Now that last part is pretty interesting. You're going through all that Jesus is saying and you're thinking that he's leading up to this idea that you can ask God for anything and he'll make sure that he gives you the good thing and he's not going to give you a bad thing and that's true. But then he says, God wants even more to give the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks. Have you ever thought to ask God for the Holy Spirit when you were praying? Why would he even want the Holy Spirit? That is something that we're going to hear a lot more about in our story today. But first, I thought we should kick today off singing a song that reminds us just how well our Father takes care of us, what good gifts he gives us, and why we should ask and seek and knock. Let's sing. You and I, B I B L E, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never, ever alone. I'm learning how J E S U S came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. And our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, It says to me, tells me that I'm never, ever alone. I'm learning how J-S-U-S came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. And our God knows exactly. 
exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you seek, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, he cares When you seek, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. And now God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, I don't know about you, but I definitely needed that reminder to stop and pray and ask God for the help that I need and to remember that he cares about the things I care about. I don't know why, but I do have a tendency to try and handle life on my own, especially when it's going well. But I will say that when I'm afraid or when I'm upset or when I just feel like I'm in over my head, that is a time that I'm often able to remember to pray and to ask God to help me because I don't know what to do. And that is exactly where we find our disciples in our story today. Let's read. God sends help. Jesus' friends and helpers huddled together in a stuffy upstairs room. Even though it was sunny outside, the shutters were closed. The door was locked. Wait in Jerusalem, Jesus had told them. I am going to send you a special present. God's power is going to come into you. God's Holy Spirit is coming. So here they were, waiting. Actually, mostly what they were doing was just being scared and hiding. You can't blame them. Their best friend had left. The important people and leaders were after them and Jesus had given them a job they didn't know how to do. As they waited, they were praying and remembering. Remembering how, from the beginning, God had been working out his secret rescue plan. Suddenly, a strong wind filled the little room, whistling through the walls, rustling the straw on the floor. And there, on everyone's heads, shining in the gloom, were flickering flames, fire that didn't hurt or burn, and something more. Inside, in their hearts, they felt a strange heat, almost as if all the coldness and hardness were melting away, as if their broken hearts were mending, and God was giving them brand new hearts, hearts that could work properly. How it happened, they didn't know but they knew God's power had struck their hearts ablaze and Jesus himself was coming to live inside them. They had seen Jesus go away, but now he was closer than he had ever been, inside their hearts. And this time, nothing could ever separate them. Jesus would always be there with them, loving them whispering the promise that would get rid of the poison and the terrible lie and the sickness in their hearts. God's wonderful promise to them, you are my child and I love you. Make your home in me as I make my home in you, Jesus had said. Could it be? Heaven was coming into their hearts. They threw open the shutters. 
Sunlight flooded the room as love had flooded their hearts. And the little room was filled with happy noises, dancing feet, singing, laughing. They unlocked the door and surged out into the streets as if they had never been afraid. Peter spoke in a loud voice so everyone could hear. Jesus died for you, he said, because he loves you. But God made him alive again. He has rescued you. People stopped and listened. The words sank down deep into their hearts and worked like a medicine that makes you well, like the antidote to a deadly poison, like a kiss that wakes you from a deep sleep. Stop running away from God, Peter said. Run to him instead so he can love you and make you free. And Peter told them the wonderful story of God's love. God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking always and forever love. How Jesus had come and all that had happened. There were lots of people from faraway countries in Jerusalem. They couldn't speak the same language. But as they listened to Peter, everyone could understand what he was saying in their own languages. Many people believed and became Jesus' new friends and helpers. And the wonderful news of Jesus spread like sparks from a fire to villages, towns, cities. Every day, more and more people believed. And so it was that the family of God's children, his special people, grew. One man was watching. I'll stop this, Paul said. But this was God's plan, and nothing in all the world would ever be able to stop it. What a difference the Holy Spirit made in Jesus' friends in just one day. They went from cowering in fear to spreading the word full of faith and joy. Now, it is worth pointing out that that is not how it happens in every single person, every single time. When we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we do not have flames over our heads and we don't suddenly burst with joy all the time. But the reason that happened was because this was a very special day. The day was called Pentecost and it was a holiday. And it was a day on which people from all over the land would come to Jerusalem and celebrate this special day. And that's why the Holy Spirit enabled Peter to talk to those people in their own languages. This is a thing that happened one time and not very many times since then. The reason Jesus wanted that to happen, the reason he sent his Holy Spirit in such an amazing way that day is because God was beginning something new. He was going to take his rescue plan, which had been going on for a really long time, and he was going to spread it from his people, the Jews in Israel, to the whole entire world. Because Jesus told his disciples, we are going global with this information. We are going global with the good news that I am alive and I love people. So this was the beginning of telling the whole wide world. Let's celebrate the idea that God is interested in the whole entire world, that he loves everybody, including you. Let's sing.
black and white Every color, every shade We are precious in the sight By his love we are made Red and yellow, black and white Every color, every shade We are precious in the sight By his love we are made you glad that God has put the whole wide world in his hands and not ours? I think it is obvious there is no way we could spread the good news of Jesus to the whole world without the help of the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be praying and asking God to give us the power through the Holy Spirit to tell everyone with joy in our hearts that God loves them, that Jesus is alive, that he died for them, and that he is their rescuer, ready and waiting to offer them salvation. I hope that you believe that message. I hope that you want to spread that message. And I hope that in this last song, which is a new one, it will become a prayer for you where you invite the Holy Spirit to set your heart on fire with love, for the people that he loves. Let's sing, and I'll see you next week. Come set your